Oh, jeez, jeez. Let's go into the swamp now to cook up these fish. <gasps> Pretty sure the beaver's trying to intimidate us, guys. Welcome to another episode. As you can see, we are currently out on a swampy, marshy, lily padded lake right now on my fishing kayak. I've never fished this lake before and I've gotten skunked a lot lately, so I don't know how we're gonna do, but we're gonna try and catch some trout. What we'll do is take them back here into the marsh area and then we'll cook them up on the kayak together. It's a little sketchy because I do keep seeing like a beaver splashing around with his tail. He's like angry at me being here right now. So hopefully we don't get attacked by a beaver. Now, since this lake is brand new to me and I've never fished it before, I brought a variety of setups with me. Uh, one of them is a slip float uh, setup. If you guys have been following me for a while, you know that that is my absolute favorite way to catch fish. Um, it's just a braided main line uh, down to a swivel with a little fill uh, bobber on there. And then I'm using a four pound leader with a small panfish hook. Then I've got one bass rod here. It's just an ugly stick with uh, some heavy duty braided line and a 12 pound leader currently on there. Just one of those stupid little rubber frogs. So as you guys can see, the lily pads end there about 50 feet in front of me. There's stuff blown up at the surface uh, that seems to be eating a bunch of little bait fish. So I don't know, we can maybe try a few uh, casts with the frog and see if they're bass. And if not, we can switch over to the bobber rod. All right, now tell me that this don't look fishy. Do you see that? There's a feeding bass over there. Now we're not necessarily here for bass. Oh, that was not a very good cast. But I will not say no to a topwater bass bite. I'll tell you about what we'll do while we're fishing with that frog is we'll just cast that bobber out there too, just to see if we can't pick uh, something else up on a second pull. There we go. Something is just devouring some little fish over there. As the suspense is ridiculous right now, there's just delicious looking lily pads everywhere. A very cute little frog. So far, I've just not been able to figure out how to fish these frogs effectively, guys. It's been tricky, very tricky. I'm seeing a lot of fish that I think are bass. So I'm gonna try and just focus on the uh, bobber rod here. The old night crawler right there. Actually, it's not a night crawler. This is like a red worm. Huh, this one actually looks kind of sad. Kind of looks dead. We're gonna just feed him to the fish. There we go, this guy looks good. So the way that I rig up these worms is I just go, I like to have a little bit of the uh, the head sticking out about that much. So then I just start sliding them up the uh, hook shank like this. There we go, then come out right there. Then I take the top portion and just slide it over that little eyelet of the hook. And now you could absolutely fish them like this already, but I like to just go uh, through here one more time just to just to hold them on a little bit better. So then you're left with a night crawler rigged, just like that. All right, here we go, here we go. Moment of truth. Oh, oh, something's going for that bobber. Some, oh, there we go, we got a fish, baby. That's right, we got something. What is it? Oh, geez, come here. Oh, it's a giant, giant, uh, oh, it's a trout. It's a trout, how, oh. <laughs> Maybe that's what's feeding on all those bait fish out there. Wow. Unbelievable. Stay in there, you know what? We're gonna like hold him in the net and bonk him inside 
than that. He ain't getting away from this grip. He's behaving like he doesn't want us to eat him. Uh, this really is a good looking trout. Look at those colors. Check out how that fish was hooked. <laughs> I mean, just through a little piece of skin. That's it. Huh, there we go. We still have that exact same worm right there. That trout was kind enough to leave that for us on the hook. So we're just gonna go ahead and cast that right back out there, kind of in the same spot, which is honestly like right in front of us. Oh, 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 geez, something's already going for it. Oh, just that's a fish. <laughs> right away. I mean, very next cast. Oh, geez. Oh, oh, we got, oh, we got a fighter, guys. We got a fire. That's the nice thing about these ultra light rods, guys, is, you know, oh, geez, even a, not a giant. Oh, geez. Even a trout that's not a total giant will still put up a really good fight. But these are good sized trout. I'm not going to lie. These are actually really nice. There we go. Plus I am using four pound uh, mono leaders, so we don't want to fight these fish too hard. Oh, jeez, jeez. There he is, come on, come on, baby, come on, come on. Ah, <laughs> that is another studly, studly trout. The fish in this lake just have the most beautiful color. It's unbelievable. And they are digging the bobber, baby. <laughs> For anyone interested in the type of hook that I'm using, uh, these are called um, Aberdeen hooks or panfish hooks, something like that. It's just the hookup ratio on the fish is amazing. You don't tend to lose them as much. And the nice thing is that if a fish that you want to release does swallow the hook pretty deep, that shank is long enough to where you can still reach that shank and hopefully get it out without injuring the fish too much. Yeah, that's a challenge, guys. Let's just see if we can get one more fish on that sloppy looking worm. <laughs> I don't know about that, but all we can do is try, right? So these trout must just be like, cruising and patrolling this whole area here of the lake next to those lily pads because there's probably a lot of small bait fish back here that these trout are hunting. I thought that it was bass blowing up at the surface and eating these little fish. Let's go ahead and just send this baby out one more time. Same kind of spot, which was essentially right in front of us. And we're fishing about three to four feet deep or something right now. Oh, there he's again. We, we missed him, but it went down right away. The trout bite is just on fire. Maybe it, it just wants to see that, that worm drop again. It seems like that's when they're grabbing is just instantly on that drop. Come on, right there. You know you're looking at that trout. Oh, 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 there we go, there we go, there we go. Bobber, bobber, down. Oh, and that's a fish. <laughs> oh man, look at that. Oh, not as much of a fighter. Oh, never mind. Oh, <laughs> never mind. The fight picked up all of a sudden. All right, geez, we got to get this truck out of the net. <laughs> and come on. Oh, that one in the net. Three trout caught on this one very sad looking worm. They don't seem to be picky right now. <laughs> I'm going to pull out some power bait and we're going to do a power bait challenge. See if we can get a trout on power bait too. Uh, obviously the worm works great, but let's just try something new. So these here are the classic power bait trout nuggets. If you guys have never tried power bait before and want to catch trout, this is probably the one to start with. Power bait, I mean, they make, I think it's made by Berkeley uh, and they make all sorts of different stuff, but this is the original. Uh, if you just want to know that you're you like, have confidence in your bait, uh, this stuff works really well. Got a little, little seal up there, fresh tin. Uh, something about that nasty, chemically garlicky bait flavor that I really like. And what these things are like is they're like little marshmallows. Oh, there's a trout right in front of us, so let's be really quick here. The way that I like to hook up this power bait is slide one on, put it up on your line, then come on with the second one. There we go, let the second one sit right there and then just take the first one that you put on, slide it right back down, and now your whole hook is covered. It's always exciting when it's power bait time. <laughs> so I'm just gonna cast this right out in front of us where we just saw a fish surface. I mean, literally it was right there. 
All right, so the power bit does not seem to be working, but let's give it a fair chance. Uh, it could also just be that like there's no trout around or that the bite is off. Uh, so let's go ahead and throw a worm on there one more time, see what happens. Oh, 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 that's a bobber down, bobber down. Oh, that's a fish, that's a fish, guys. Oh, oh, dang, good one, too. Oh, really good one. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, I still got, still got one more trout in the net here. I gotta, gotta get him out. Here we go. Here we go. Ah, oh. <laughs> got him, baby. Got him. Wow, another gorgeous rainbow trout. Man, just gobbled up those worms. Check that fish out, guys. Dang. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Gorgeous little rainbow trout. There we go. Cleaned those two off real good. So what I'll just do like on all the other videos is I'll just put the uh, Amazon links to this gear uh, in the video description below in case you guys are looking for like a sweet ultralight uh, trout fishing setup. Man, love this thing. Let's go into the swamp now to cook up these fish. The beaver just came down through here. Pretty sure the beaver's trying to intimidate us, guys. We're gonna start cooking right here, but you know what? Why not? Why not just have a little bobber poo hanging out there to see if something, you know, can't just like happen there. So we're gonna cook this guy up right here. I think we found the spot. Cut him from the butthole all the way up between these two fins. Boom, see that? Slicing right on through. Go behind the head here, cut down like that. And all you do then is just take that head, boom. See that? Rip the head off, all the guts and everything. Came right off. We'll throw it right in the water so that the crabs and the, the little crawdads and other fish and whatever's down there can eat it. Uh, now we've got, ooh, oh, wow, guys, that's nice and uh, kind of pinkish meat right there. We've got our tail right here. Don't need that. Will you look at that? Now that, that's a slab of meat right there. Second side's always harder, guys. Take your time though, don't waste any meat. Got another slab of meat. Next thing I'm gonna do is just take off these little fins here. Cool. All we got left is meat and skin. I like eating my trout with the skin on. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. We're having like updated polls all the time, like skin or no skin. Um, I vote skin just because there's so much flavor in it. Just because this is like some really big pieces and my pan is not that big. I'm going to cut these guys in half. Now, if you clean up on your pants, just don't let your mother see you. 
Yeah, if you guys need a little mess kit like this, I'll have the gear links uh, in the video description below. So, I love this thing. It was like 25 or 30 bucks or something like that for a multi-piece. Look at that. Comes with a, oh crap, it's falling apart. We got a, got a pan that we'll need here. Uh, and then it comes with a pot inside the pan, a lid, and inside the pot is where I transport uh, the stove. That's an MSR pocket rocket. Can't beat that baby, especially not for 30 bucks. Got a little mini spatula. Did someone just take a regular spatula and like cut it off or something? Or was it made like this? Got my lighter. We got one more item in here. Can you guys guess what else we got in there? I think you know it. That's right, <laughs> some Danish sea salt. So we're gonna bread this trout actually a little bit, just a super light breading on it. Um, sprinkle a little on the cutting board here. There we go. That is not the uh, most stable platform I've ever used. There we go, I just wanted to add a little bit of crunch to this trout here. So butter, oh, it is ready, ready, ready. Get that trout in there. Now, a lot of people ask me in the comments, like whether I eat the pin bones or not, like, I don't know, it's a personal preference, obviously, you know, like make sure you don't choke on any bones or something like that. But uh, I personally leave them in there. They don't really bug me too much. Everything that fits goes in. If it fits, it ships. Look at that all sizzling away in there. So we're gonna add a very critical ingredient now, Danish sea salt. Just enjoy this moment. You know what, we're, we're just gonna... Oh, oh, oh yeah, baby. Oh, yeah. You know what? Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. These trout can flip around. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, look at that. Nothing's taken that, uh, that worm there. What do you guys think? Time for a little little recast? How about just over there? Oh, in the bushes? Snagged it up. Well, I guess we're done fishing. We're just gonna cook now. <laughs> we're gonna throw in just a little tiny bit of the smokehouse maple seasoning. It's really good stuff. And by the way, if you guys are enjoying this, I upload videos like this every single week. So feel free to subscribe to my channel. Uh, that way you guys don't miss the brand new episodes. And we're gonna just turn that on one more time just to kind of heat up my tortillas here. Get those edges nice and toasty. And you guys know I like my fish wraps with a little bit of, a little bit of cheese. Now guys, we are not using onion and avocado like usual today, but that's all right because we're gonna try something new here because this is kind of a wild catch and cook, you know, we're out in the, the wild swamp. So why not do some wild style chipotle kicker sauce? All right guys, here goes the trout. Mm. Oh man. So each piece gets one, uh, one tail, one front piece. All right, let's see what kind of a monster we've created here. Ooh. You know it's a good day when it's trout soft taco time. Let's see how this goes. Damn, guys. This is, I mean, it, it, it's missing the onion. I'll be 100% honest with you. Could use some onion. Meat is nice and pink. Trout is super flavorful. The skin's nice and crispy, just the way I like it. That um, that wild chipotle pepper sauce or whatever that was, has a nice little kick to it. All right, we'll see all of you guys next week for the next fishing adventure. Till then, you all know it. Fish on, baby. Mm. Oh, I still have to untangle that damn bobber. <laughs>